how are you and welcome to this video now today once again i am welcoming you we are still trying to gain some insight to some of the technical areas of uh, the 2023 kcse computer project and uh, as i've been saying this is the third video and i'm not here to teach you how to do your project uh, but just to help you be able to, to 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 work out some technical bits of the project and uh, this is just to facilitate towards the success of what you are doing yesterday or uh, in the previous videos if you did not watch them yesterday uh, then the previous vid uh, videos that we have made so far are uh, number one we learned how to compute total membership fee then uh, we also did a bit of uh, working out the, the discounted prices using queries you realize in so doing i also want to believe that we were able to do uh, the part c which is working out computing the total amount for items bought we are going to see shortly why i'm saying that we were able to cover that i want to do a, a recap or to connect this video with what we did yesterday because there will be a linkage after we did the queries which i'm just about to show you we did a query and we called it query invoice items query invoice items is showing us details of um, of the items purchased as per a given invoice number like i have highlighted uh, let me just try to sort the records so that we are able to to have them in a particular order uh, the three records on top here they all belong to invoice number one invoice number one we had somebody who purchased uh, pairs of socks 12 uh, bloomers 20 games or whatever and we were able to calculate the total amount that was to be paid for the 12 times the actual amount of a pair of socks uh, to give us a total of 4200 remember we had to reference to another table where we have stored information about the items so i don't, don't want to go back to what we did yesterday just check uh if you have not seen the previous videos then you have no business to first watch this one you need to go back to video number one and then video number two and then uh, you can follow this is our third video uh, so today now we, uh, okay after we did this video i mean uh, this uh, this query we also did another one now to summarize a uh, how much the person will pay an addition of 4200 plus 5000 plus 9000 for invoice number one what is the total that the, the person should pay and uh, we are going to also check the issue of uh, this thing that is nagging up here uh, a parameter value which is required sum of total amount we are going to see what could be the problem uh, but nevertheless the query is there it's running uh, only that issue of a parameter value request we are going to sort it out uh, just now um, you find that uh, this summarizes the records that we have in query invoice items in query invoice items we have three records for invoice one uh, three records for invoice two three records for invoice three and uh, in query invoice item discounts we have only three records it's a summary it's an addition of what total one should pay uh, for a given invoice you know when you go to a shop we give an example when you go to a supermarket you buy several items and then you are told the sum total that you are supposed to pay will be this much why we had to create this summary query was because we have a paragraph that is telling us that we need to give a five percent discount to those who are uh, paying from ten thousand and above you know goods worth ten thousand and above are given a discount of five percent and that is why we created this table uh, this query rather and uh, the discount you see here was as a result of an expression so i want to sort out the parameter issue here uh, so I'll just switch to design view those who uh, have uh, 
been following me now this is how we sort out the matter of the parameter value the parameter value will always occur when you misspell a, a field name or when you wrongly place a field name where it is not supposed to be and at times when you have this total row total row will always appear when you are working with summary queries and in this case when we have the total row and then you happen to build an expression just like the way we have done in this particular column here we have built an expression then you need to eliminate the group by the group by let me zoom in so that you see where i am you need to eliminate the issue of group by here because what we have at the top here uh, we don't want to group by discounts. There's no logic there. We cannot group by discounts, but this is just a simple expression. This is an expression. So from the group by or from the total row, I'll replace that and I'll choose expression. Expression. Right. So the issue now of uh, the parameter request will now be sorted. If I switch to datasheet view, uh, you realize the parameter value is no longer uh, required. Good. So that's just a recap of what we did yesterday. Now, uh, in this video, I now want to us to learn how do we use uh, the two queries uh, to create an, int, uh, an entry an entry form or entry forms where we shall be capturing the cells that we we make uh, so that's what we are about to do creating entry or input forms uh, which will be capturing the cells that we are making and remember in the process of so doing we shall also require to create a report we shall also be required to create a report for what we shall create a report to uh, to, to give to the customer who is purchasing. That's called a receipt. We are going to generate a receipt very, very soon. So first thing first, I start by creating what? A form. This form you need to follow closely because it's a form where we are going to integrate, uh, to incorporate several record sources, several record sources, and one of which will be table invoice table invoice uh, and in table invoice I require to have invoice number, member ID uh, date of purchase a give discount mode of payment may be necessary and then apart from that when we have member ID here when we have member ID there we also need to know who is this particular member uh, can we get some of the details of this particular member instead of just seeing a member number 001 or 002? Can we also get the actual name? So I'm pulling down the list of tables or queries again to pick table members and then the member name now I don't need to repeat member ID. It's already on the right side selected field uh, I need to pull uh, full name then what else i may be interested with the p.o box town mobile number um what else might be necessary probably the uh, photo uh, the uh, photo might be necessary remember photo if you you had such a field you know i'm just trying to think of what i need to include uh, and then from there what else i now want to use the query called query invoice items you know the query that is listing the records of all the items that we are purchased all the items the list of all the records of items that we are purchased not the summary one but the one which has got all the records then from it invoice number i already have it uh, but now i need to have item id item id quantity sold and uh, then there is the total amount the total amount but remember apart from toy item id i may also want to see what is the item name and what is the item name remember there is a, a table which is having item id and item name in my case the table is called table items so i choose table items and then i get a uh, item name 
and then what is the cost per item what is the cost per item so that gives me now a go ahead i can now move to the next level uh, you can see how many tables or queries we have incorporated i have table members invoices and query invoices and uh, table items so in case you have a challenge just go back so, uh, uh, let's go back a little bit and then replay the video once again and then try to identify how we have selected all the items that we have selected from these different tables now how do you want to view your data the main issue is that we are generating an invoice and therefore the report should be uh, or the form should be organized by invoices uh, and then within the invoice we shall be having the sub items the sub items that we purchased so then we carry on to the next level and then uh, how do you want what layout is the best for my sub form uh, i want tabula tabula because i may want to decorate here decorate some amount there and so on uh, tabula allows me to do some formatting data sheet may not allow me to do some formatting then uh, two forms will be generated there will be the mother form the one which is called the form and then there will, will be the child form which we, which is being called the sub form i will call the first one a uh, frm invoicing invoicing form and call the next one uh, frm invoicing invoicing sub form right so we have two forms there is the mother frm invoicing form and there is the child frm invoicing sub form and that is it that is it i click on finish and check how uh will my uh, my forms be organized okay appears uh, somehow satisfactory uh, but of course we need to do so many improvements so i will do very fast some improvements i'll grab these fields widen all of them to have an equal width uh, size to the widest i've noticed that the photo area is too large too large there so i make it a little bit shorter then uh, it should be on this right side and then these fields probably i need to have them close here close there uh, then i say what then i can widen i have seen a case of a date which was not appearing correctly because of the width of the field then the member photo i place it there then uh, what else i have removed the label for member photo everybody should be conversant with the a member photo uh why is it there and so on uh this title i can just have it at the top there then i place this sub form there then i try to widen a bit i try to widen a little bit and then i can give uh, a subheading invoice invoice uh, items or uh, items purchased invoice items or items purchased it depends on what title would you like to give to the to the form to the sub form down there all right so I may not take uh, all your time trying to organize my form here and my sub form. I'll, I'm going to reorgan uh, to organize it further uh, later. But just see now the appearance of the form now once again. Uh, the field for date of purchase is still quite narrow. So I'll just widen both of them simultaneously. Like so. Test again. Test again in form view. Test again in form view. Why is not form view? Why is form view not appearing like that? Okay, it's now appearing well. Uh, issues I don't like very well is when I have mixed alignments. Uh, I have got no invoice number on the right, 
member uh, member ID on the right, uh, David Nyangaya on the left, and so on. So I need to once again tell the computer to change the alignment of my controls there uh, to make them be left aligned. All of them to be left aligned, to be left aligned. Remember other improvements that you can do to the form if you need to have a shape fill. Uh, if you need to have a shape outline, uh, all those issues are upon you now to improve the, to enhance the appearance of your, of your form, the way you would want it to appear. Make it quite appealing, not, not over decorating. Uh, many times I find students doing the mistake of over decorating things. There is a way you can mix colors and they end up being crushing instead of making it beautiful. Right, so the other issues you are going to leave me doing uh, them and um, so what I'm going to do is pause my video but probably because before I pause my video I need to mention that at the bottom at the bottom of the sub form here we need to see uh, how much <coughs> what is the overall total that this person should pay. We are going to recalculate that. We are not going to get from the query, but we are going to do our own calculation. So uh, I can just open the, uh, the, the, the sub form, get into it, where it is still on the mother, or you can open it in isolation. There's not a problem. You can have it in isolation, opening it alone somewhere, or you can open it from the mother. I've chosen to open it when it is within the mother form. Um, so the area that I want to expand a bit is the form footer, the form footer of uh, of the sub form. There I am. So I am now in the sub form. Its form footer is what I have expanded a little bit. Uh, there are some columns which are extra wide. You need to organize them slowly until everything appears neatly as you would have wished it to be. Okay, so do this slowly in your own free time and uh, let it appear nicely, nicely organized. Then um, what are we inserting? I'm inserting a text box which will be used to get for me the total, the overall total, the grand total of uh, this particular invoice. So I get a text box there, place it down there, right, place it down there, uh, so call it what you may want, I want to call it Grand Toto, and then uh, keenly observe this, it will be a summation of uh, the field total amount above here. So. Uh, right now it is unbound because it has no control. It is not getting data from anywhere. It's unbound. So we want to bind it to an expression. So what I have done is display the properties sheet. And then I go to, con uh, or to data option. And then I go to control source. I build an expression telling the computer to find the sum. In this expression builder, I'm typing the word sum. Uh, zoom in sum what find the sum of the total amount field find the sum of the total amount field and then I say okay I say okay and there I am if I open uh, good so this is the total amount the grand total the grand total is 18200 now, I may also want to show the discount when I'm still here. Uh, it will be technical to get it from the query that we used. Uh, probably that query now we are reserving it to be used for designing a report of the discounts that you have ever given. But we need to again create a, an expression to display the discount we are going to give to David Nyangaya after the purchase of the three items that we have here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is again uh, design the form further. I design the form once again. Give this control a name that I'll, I will remember. Which control? The text box we just inserted. I want to give it a name that I will remember. And I want to call it 
I want to call it, uh, and this is done by opening the properties sheet, going to other page, and then you'll find a place labeled name, a place labeled name. So I'll type txt a total amount txt total amount that will be the the name of the control that i have just inserted here so that now i will insert yet another text box at the bottom so from form design i'm getting a text box control getting a text box control to place it just beneath just beneath the grand total text box just beneath there and what is it for to display the discount to display the discount so the label i call it discount discount and uh, discount and then i go to the text box itself the text box side i will create uh, an expression i will create an expression so i go to data then control source control source i'm going to create an expression which will say i zoom in I zoom in, sorry, uh, just a minute, I zoom in like so, and then I'll say, if we, we, we said in access, in one of the videos I said in access, we normally have if with the double I, it's not like in Excel where we use single I, we use if with the double I, requires an expression, what is the expression? I'm going to find my newly created TXT control at the bottom, at the middle here. TXT total amount. I don't know why it's not appearing, or probably it's because I did not save. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm wondering why. But there is that control that I created. I'll just type its name TXT within txt total amount total amt i suspect that is how i typed it if txt total amount is less than uh, ten thousand then what do we do we are not giving any discount so i type a comma to represent the true part the value if true when uh, it's less than ten thousand we are giving zero discount but when it is greater than that we are giving a discount of five percent five over a hundred times the value that we have in txt txt total total amount txt total amount i believe i had captured the name correctly i have captured the name correctly in case i haven't then uh, I am in for a surprise. Things may not work well for me. Um, so let me just check that the name of this control, the name of the control is, uh, is not the way I have spelt it. It's not the way I have spelt it. I spelt it wrongly because in the properties sheet, I used TXT total amount. So that should be the name that I'm going to use in the text box beneath txt total amount so i'm going again to data and then redesign the the expression then txt total amount i'm replacing now with the txt total amount in full a uh, txt total amount in full like so uh so will things work let's see i trust the things will thing will work for me so on home, I'm viewing. I'm viewing what I have done. And the thing is working. You can see uh, we have a grand total, 18,200. This person qualifies for a discount. And uh, the discount is 910. If you take your calculator, work out 5% of the 18,200, you find it is 910. Let me check another sale that we did. Uh, there is a sale that we did to Alan Gogi up there and then uh, the sale the total amount is six thousand five hundred that member does not require uh, qualify for a discount the third one 
uh, is who we sold something to Susan Friend, a uh, total of 16500 uh, a discount of 8 to 5 Very good. So I think we are together that far. Uh, the things that remain is just making uh, some adjustments to the appearance of the form, the way you would want it to appear making it for example to float above i don't know whether we still remember that making the form to float above that that i can repeat because somebody might have forgotten and i don't like the way access accumulates things within a ribbon here that if i have to open another thing it will be attached here it will be attached here i prefer when i open a form let it be floating above just like an ordinary window so i'm uh, designing the form the mother form is selected the mother form is selected and uh, how do you know it's selected where the two rulers intersect this tiny corner or alternatively up here you can pick the item that you want to format and this time we want to format the form uh, and the other on other tab there are these two very critical options how do we want the window to appear so at the bottom when i click on pop-up option uh, on pop-up option pop-up makes what it opens a form or report in pop-up window that remains on top of other windows exactly i want it to be set to true what about model model opens a form or report in a window that kept that keeps focus until it is closed so meaning you cannot be able to interact with the items that are behind the window when you have set the model option to be to be true so let me also set it to be true uh, such that everybody who is using my form must always remember to first close it to be able to access the items behind it so what's the change let's see so there i am so the form now is a pop-up window we cannot interact with the what is behind because it's also model form right it appears now afloat it appears floating on top of the other windows very well uh good now i said that after we have done this after we have done this and uh, i don't know whether we have saved i need to first save i need to just save the the, the form control s will do that uh, we may want to say, for instance, click a button somewhere and print this invoice. We may want to click an invoice, uh, a button somewhere, and we print this invoice, right? So I am going to create a report. So this uh, this video we are going to create. We have created two items. One is that form that I have just closed together with its sub form. And now, too, I'm just about to create a report. This report is for what? It is the one we are going to use to print uh, uh, to print the invoice, the receipt that we are going to give to this customer. So very fast, it's just like the way we have designed the form plus its sub form. So I go to create. This time, I choose report wizard. Report wizard. First item just like the way we did in the form don't forget we started by table invoices what things let's say all things uh i've chosen everything that i have there then what else i also want to use the mm, the, 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 the the table that is called table members so that instead of just seeing a member id i'll also be able to see the full name the uh P.O. Box, town, mobile number, and uh, what else? Uh, can we also include the year photo? Just like in the form that we did. Okay, very good. Then from there, what else did we select? We selected the query that lists all records of the invoice. All records of the invoice. I called it query invoice items. Then... Um, Invoice number, I shall not repeat it because it's already captured, but I want item ID, quantity sold, total amount. Then we also want again to see what is this item. Instead of just seeing the item number, let us also see what is the item name. So that name is coming from another table called table 
items and then i pick item name item uh, I, uh, amount per item carry on to the next and uh, just like in the in what we saw when we were designing the form we find the report talks about how do you want to view your data by table invoices very good so we pick an invoice number and then what are the list of items that are attached to that invoice then the way the computer has selected is okay for me i carry on to the next step do i want to do any grouping uh, actually not actually not uh, what else do i want to establish any order uh, there i can i may choose to establish a particular order i may choose to have the items organized by by item id I can choose to have them listed by item ID, but that's optional. That's not necessary. Then, good thing about the report is that you can also utilize the summary options and you can be able to uh, work out some calculations. So, we want also to see at the bottom a summary of what is the total amount to be paid what is the total amount to be paid so let the computer do the work for us uh, so that again we shall have very little to do uh, to this report uh, the kind of layout that we are going to use be it block be it outline uh, let me choose block and then portrait layout is okay for me then I choose next then I choose now the report name. The report uh, is not like the form. The form we saw that we got to a result of two forms, a mother and a child. But for the report, it's just one. I'm going to call it RPT, RPT invoices, RPT invoices. Very well. There it comes. That is good. Okay, mm, it's, it, it has come, but uh, it's messy, but uh, however it has come, it has come. So mine is just to reorganize the report. I su uh, switch to design view. Then uh, to the top there, we've got a place where the report is talking about, we have how many sections? These sections in a report are not like in the form. A report can have numerous, numerous sections. Like now, we told our report, let it be organized by table invoices. And that is why we have got a bar here showing invoice number header. So what I'm going to do is to drag the invoice number label down there. And then I look for where is the invoice number text box let them match there all right so observe as i do another one what is the next field uh, there is a field of date of purchase but i first want to do member id let its label be there the label and then the member number text box to be alongside there okay uh, then we have got the date of purchase date of purchase we can have it on the right side of the report date of purchase i can have it there like so date of purchase i can have it there a uh, give discount give discount i can also choose to have have it there and uh, then its label where is it uh, I mean, it's text box. It's a check box that I have down there, right? So it's the, the issue of organizing, organizing your report. This is mode of payment. Uh, mode of payment, I put it next there. I'm preserving a space for full name. So full name, after we have member ID, let the full name be there. And then the full name text box to be where? To be there. So simply this is just about how good are you in designing things are you good at design uh do you know where you should place what and the like so 
it's not that this is a skill that can be taught by a teacher. Mine is just to show you how to move these items, where they are, where you can uh, have them uh, from one place to another, and so on, like so. That's town. I may not require the label for town. I may also not want to have, or I can just have it there, the mobile number uh, label, and then the mobile number what? text box okay like there a uh, this is member photo too prolonged downward and uh, it appears funny uh, that it was repeated in every record that was displayed it was repeated over and over and over so let it appear there now at the section we are calling invoice number header invoice number header okay so item id now there are the, those ones which i'm going to organize across uh, see that label item id i'm now looking for item name item name i think this is the item name i will put it there that's item name and then a uh, item name what else quantity sold quantity sold these are labels these are labels and then amount per item what is the cost unit cost per item and then what was the total amount to be paid what was the total amount to be paid so item id there position it there nicely and then item name this is the text box to be matching its respective label above to match its respective label above then uh, this is amount there are some others which are hidden here so if you will not key in, you will say some things are not appearing this is total amount total amount i'm looking for yet another thing uh quantity quantity is something that i have not seen where they have placed it it's here so i when i was dragging i dragged two items simultaneously quantity sold there you are total amount there you are amount per item i want it to match the size of the label above and then uh, at the bottom here we have got the invoice number footer i drag it upward i drag it upward like that and uh, that is it uh, i now want to check uh, how are things how are things let me see how is my report how is my report let me uh, i don't know whether it is visible from your end but you can see that we have got the first invoice number one it has got the david nyangaya is the person who we sold to date of purchase of course the hash error is because of the size of that box you can at least see the items that uh, they, they they purchased you can be able to see the items they purchased uh, i just need to reorganize a bit so that here instead of seeing bruma bruma i need to see the the item number itself i need to show the item number itself then i am also not seeing the total though there is this row where we have some and there is a small bar here so that means that probably that is where my my grand total is hiding at if you look at where some has been squeezed it's just appearing like a small bar here if you are not keen enough you'll not notice it and that is the one uh, there is a row here which i don't require at all this summary i don't need it I not, don't need to have this summary, uh, the summary line. So I remove it. Then I go to view, print preview. Mm -hmm. So there is the total. And so on. Uh, so the only thing that we can probably also learn when we are working with this report 
Each member will be given their own receipt. Each member will be given their own receipt. And therefore, it will not be a continuous list of things that, like the, what we are seeing here. We are seeing a list of several invoices uh, displayed. A list of several invoices displayed. Invoice number one, invoice number two, invoice number three. We may want to break them up. So what I will do, let me first insert a heading for my invoices. What I am doing is creating a space up there. Did you see what I did? Um, I've selected multiple items like that. Then I'm using the arrow keys to drop them down so that I create a small space up there. And uh, in that small space, I'm inserting now a what? A label control. A label control. Invoice. Or sales, let me call it sales receipt. Sales receipt. Sales receipt. Format it as you want to. Uh, format it as you wish to. Okay. I know this is a long, long video. But if you follow it up, I know you will be able to have so many questions answered about designing some of the items that are required in your, in your project. Uh, so don't get tired. Just keep following. If I am here and I'm able to do these things, who are you not to follow on, to stay alert until you are able to get, to grasp the concept of what is supposed to be done. Uh, so I'm not so sure whether date of birth, uh, date of uh, purchase will be fitting into this box. That's what I'm struggling to have here instead of having the hash error. Okay, then on home. I choose print preview. Aha. Uh -huh. So, you see, we have sales receipt. I did not spell correctly there. Uh, sales receipt. Then the details. There we are. And uh, what else can we do? You, you look at what is displayed on the second invoice. Uh, we have gray color. Uh, Microsoft Excel, that's what access, that's what it does. When it is displaying a record, it uses what we call alternating colors. So I'm going to disable alternate color for invoice number header. Invoice number header, I've selected the bar, invoice number header, and then on format, I choose alternate back color. Alternate back color, no color. Alternate back color, I choose no color. What else have I liked about my 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 sales receipt? Uh, I said here we missed an I. Uh, I also don't like the way they are interjoined one after the other, like one continuous page with all the receipts there. I would want to have them separated. So if you want to have a receipt printed in isolation, uh, you need to go to invoice number footer and then and then uh, those are those are my chicken i think uh, they, they they have some good news up there uh, we need to select the invoice number footer and then on properties sheet format page there is an option that we normally have there form uh, force new page after section force new page after section uh force new page after section and there we now have there receipts each receipt now should be in isolation this is david nyangaya that's the year receipt and then okay don't worry about this this you can just either reduce the the size of the hanging the hanging box or increase the width of your report uh then i have got my second receipt you see, it's on its own page. It's on its own page. So far, so good. I guess now you have a clue on what you need to do to have uh, the receipt in the, the receipts, the sale invoice or the sale receipt uh, after you have designed your 
report after you have designed your report there is it okay and uh, now I just want to finally show you how we can click a button to open a particular sales receipt how we can click a button to display a particular sales receipt and where are we clicking the button from it's when we are doing a sale when we are doing a sale we have got this invoice form we may want now to print these details remember we do not print forms but we print uh, reports okay already we have designed that report we have designed that report which we are going to print out which we are going to print out and therefore I need to insert a button somewhere uh, probably on the mother or on the yes on the mother somewhere let me have a button inserted here which when I click it will produce that print uh, that that report either to display it in preview or even to print it to the printer uh, so where do we go uh, form design we have so many tools and then the tool is button drop it drop it there just below the photo and then what is the category of the action that I want to perform I want to perform a report operation a report operation then what do we want to preview a report to preview a report preview a report and uh, we go to the next what report do we want to preview to preview report invoices to preview report invoices that's the selected and uh, show receipt that's the text which will appear on the on the button face uh, show receipt and then next and then I call it command show show receipt command show receipt command show receipt and then I finish okay then quickly I test this form I test this form and if I click this button a uh, you may say that something has not happened but in the background uh, we are able to see the report the receipt that we want we are able to see the receipt that we want and therefore it means that we can be able to print a report uh, based on the button that we click however I would have imagined that this button when we click it the report should raise above above the form right the report instead of the way I had said about when we were detaching this form from the from the ribbon here uh, there are two options that we did model and pop-up so likewise even in the reports when you are designing a report we also need to do that you need to tell the computer to use model option and also pop-up option so I'll close the form yeah and I'm left now with the report I go to design I go to design and then under uh, other under uh, other I'll tell the computer make this report to be a pop-up to show in pop-up wind uh, to, to show in pop-up window model model form pop-up and model options I've set them to true very good so I'm now opening the form again show receipt um, you may ask me now why are we having all the receipts instead of just having the one we are interested in why are we showing all of them because here it's like we have all of them if I were now to print uh, and if for example I had thousands of receipts then it could be very tedious for me to look for which invoice am I going to to print so we may want to avoid that we may want to avoid that and uh, I'm going now to in the next video that's the first item that I'm going to revisit uh, as I recap what we have done today 
I'll show you how you associate the displayed record here uh, such that if we were selling to Alan and we wanted to display the year receipt, now the, right now our report is not showing Alan's receipt but it's showing all the receipts available. We have David's, we have then Alan's. Okay, But we may not want to see all the receipts, we may only want to show one receipt. So in the next video, uh, if you keep following on, I'm going to show you how do you isolate all the others to only display the, uh, the receipt of interest. In the meantime, I'll also be improving the appearance of my receipt so that even in the case of where I'm using a Thermo printer, that is uh, the one which we normally use in, uh, in supermarkets, that our receipt can be able to fit in there as well. So meanwhile, I want to wish you well as you are continuing to struggle with your project. I know uh, so far the things that we have learned here about this form or on this form, how to develop a form which has got a sub form in itself. Uh, that is an area of interest where you are going to find it being applicable in so many other incidences where you may like such a scenario. Also, how to develop a report. Now, I have already done that. We have a report, invoices report, and um, we have also seen that we can touch a button to display a report. Uh, that is so good. We are progressing on well. I wish you well as you continue working on the project. Have a good, lovely day. Bye-bye.